Our last set of fundamental identities are called even odd identities. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you the first one and then I'll show with an example why that first one is true and once you kind of understand that yeah that did work that is true uh, it would follow just as easily that the other uh, five in this set are also true. So here's the maybe the first one and one we'll, we'll prove together. Uh, says that the sine of negative theta equals negative sine theta. Okay, so how could we illustrate that? How could we show that that is in fact uh, true? Let's just kind of do it with an example. Uh, let's say I wanted to know what the sine of negative pi over 6 was. Well, the sine of negative pi over 6, so I'm thinking to myself, um, on my unit circle, negative pi over 6 is this point right here. It's the point at uh, square root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. So if I wanted the sine of negative pi over 6, it's the y value of that point. It's negative 1 half. Well, this identity then says that the sine of a negative angle is the same as negative sine of that angle. And so let's see if, if this statement, if this expression is equivalent to this one's value of negative one half. Um, if I were to look at part of my unit circle again, pi over six about there, it's the point square root 3 over 2 comma half. And so the, the negative sine of pi over 6, well if I take off the negative, uh, the sine of pi over 6 is the 1 half. Well it's not sine of pi over 6 I want, it's negative of that, so it is negative 1 half. And so you can see that in fact the sine of the negative pi over 6 angle is equal to the opposite of the sine of pi over 6. They have the same value of negative 1 half. Um, that relationship would be true of any angle on the unit circle. Okay. Now likewise we could prove these other five. In the interest of time I will not prove the other five, um, you know, but leave it as an exercise for yourself if you want to to show that these are in fact true. Cosecant of negative theta is equal to negative cosecant theta. Cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine theta. Secant of negative theta is equal to secant theta. And the tangent of negative theta is equal to the negative tangent of theta cotangent of negative theta is equal to the negative cotangent of theta. So there were six of them in all. Uh, I did not mess up when I was writing them. This is not a, an error um, in that they're not all, they don't all come out to be opposite of their original. All right, we've looked at our five sets of our fundamental identities. Um, now let's do a, a little matching exercise to kind of illustrate how we can play with those identities to, to transform um, one expression into uh, another expression. This is usually done to take something that looks um, a little more complicated to something that looks a little bit simpler. Um, so how can we uh, turn this stuff over here? into this stuff. And all we have to use is the fundamental identities, those five sets of fundamental identities. Um, at any point in this part of the video it might be a good idea um, if you need, if I'm going too fast, to pause the video, uh, go back, look at the fundamental identity that I'm using um, as I don't have a, a copy of all those identities just sitting right here. I'm just going to reference them by name and, and kind of pull them out here. Um, so if you need to pause at any point uh, feel free to do that. Um, so this first one, secant x, cosine x, um, 
I guess first of all I should just say that the X's that I'm using here and the identities on the previous slides I was using thetas. Uh, theta, X, they're all just kind of dummy variables so you can use any variables that you want to use. Um, so, so that doesn't really necessarily matter. Uh, so let's see, how could we turn secant X, cosine X into one of these? Well, it is true that, um, let's see, I'm going to go up here a little bit just to save some space. Uh, it is true that secant uh, is the same as 1 divided by cosine. Now, if I change the secant and I leave the cosine x just as it is, so 1 over cosine x times cosine x, uh, well, algebraically it's true then that the, the cosine x here is being divided by a cosine x, and you know what should happen to these cosines? You're right, they should cancel out. And what's left behind? is 1. So there we've got our first match that um, secant x cosine x, the product of secant x cosine x is 1. Okay, next let's try number 2. So we have tan x cosecant x. So let's see, it is true that uh, tan x, well it's a couple different things and we could say that tan x is the sine x divided by the cosine x. That's the quotient identity for tangent. And it's also true that the cosecant x is 1 divided by sine x. Also look what happens by changing everything into sines and cosines. We've got a sine x on top and bottom of this fraction that can cancel out the resulting fraction is 1 divided by cosine x. So let's check. Well, 1 divided by cosine x isn't anything I see on this side. However, um, 1 divided by cosine, we just saw it up here, secant was 1 divided by cosine. Therefore, 1 divided by cosine is secant. And there it is. Number 2 is A. Okay, next one, cotangent squared minus cosecant squared. Well, let's see, it is true that cosecant squared, I'm going to use a Pythagorean identity here. Um, let me just write the first part of this. Um, cotan squared x minus, okay, here we go. Um, cosecant squared x, if I use a Pythagorean identity, is 1 minus cotan squared x. Well, let's see, if we were to distribute the negative sign, we'd have uh, oops, cotangent squared x minus 1 plus cotangent squared x. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I, I messed that up. I was thinking this is not going to work out very well for us. Um, cosecant squared, let me just start over right here. Cosecant squared x is uh, 1 plus cotangent squared, which would make it minus when I distribute this negative sign. Okay, so correction made, problem fixed. Cotangent squared x minus cotangent squared x is 0. The result is negative 1. That matches up to B. Okay, next one. Um, we have 1 minus cosine squared x times cosecant x. Well, uh, to do this one, uh, I'm going to have to use my Pythagorean identity. I'll write it here. I've got sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Um, if I were to take this cosine squared and move it across by subtracting it, you know, look what I, I've now created. 1 minus cosine squared is the same as sine squared. <clears throat> so all this becomes sine squared. 
Um, the cosecant x, this part of it right here, uh, while well, the reciprocal identity tells us that cosecant is 1 divided by sine x, all this sine x in the denominator will cancel out one of these signs, so I'm left with just sine x. That's f. All right, next one, we've got sine negative x divided by cosine negative x. Uh, these are uh, pretty easy to identify which one to use because we only have one set of identities that has the negative um, in them like that. Uh, the sine of negative x is equal to the negative sine x. Cosine of negative x is equal to cosine x. So let's see, if I just look at this part right here, I've got a sine divided by cosine, and that's a quotient identity for tangent. So we'd have negative tangent. Negative, remember there's the negative sign right there. So that is E. So of course I know what you're saying, the last one's got to be C, right? Well, let's go ahead and, and prove it. Uh, again, easy to know when to use these because we only have one thing that looks like this. Only one set of identities has that sine of pi over 2 minus x is cosine x cosine pi over 2 minus x is sine x cosine divided by sine there is a quotient identity that tells us that is cotangent x so that is C I have another matching exercise uh, matching part 2 uh, I think what I'm going to do is, is leave matching part two uh, blank in your notes. Um, if you want to attempt to do this slide on your own after all the notes are completed, um, that would be really good practice before coming to class. Uh, it also will give us a, a place to start discussion, uh, maybe possibly in class after we review this video. So, so let's just leave this one blank. Uh, I'll let you try it if you want to try it. Some of these are, are a little more challenging than the six that we just did, um, but maybe not so challenging after you watch the rest of this video.